Let me first congratulate the AG on his maiden speech, Mr. Speaker, in the House. Um, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the presentation made by the AG really makes this um, bill, he presented, he really makes it appear very simple. I must commend you for that. But it is not as simple as he has portrayed it, Mr. Speaker. Um, as he rightfully indicated that that bill has been around for a little while, I think this is the fourth prime minister to have this bill on his desk. So, Mr. Speaker, it has been around for a little while, and for one reason or the other, it has not gone forward. Many reasons have been given for that, Mr. Speaker. Um, before I go into some of the, the, the points that I, have, I would like to um, address, um, I must say that the Productivity Council, I believe, have been running an ad for a little while on the whole insolvency issue. And Mr. Speaker, while I understand what is attempted, I must say the, the ad is extremely, it's a very basic ad to the point where it can be interpreted as false advertising. Um, because, Mr. Speaker, it is not that simple. I am hoping today that my colleague to my immediate left as he had indicated at our last sitting of parliament, would also defend the uniqueness of the, 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 the current act that governs, that governs this, this, this um, what, what we're addressing here today, Mr. Speaker. So I'm really hoping that I would, I would get, you know, I, I would get, you know, that, that, that kind of um, education from, from, from my colleague on my immediate left, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, um, we, 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 cannot, we cannot take away from the uniqueness of what we have as it relates to the protection of um, consumers. I remember at the time when we were being um, given sort of guidance on the way forward, we were told that St. Lucia has a, a, a very unique code. In fact, I think it was termed the Code de Napoleon, or Napoleon. Um, and I was told that there were maybe only other two other jurisdictions that have a similar code. And it is very unique in terms of the protection that it, 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 it um, benefits to our people, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, one of the questions I would want to put forward to the AG and the Minister of Finance is, who does this bill really benefit? Or in other words, Mr. Speaker, which master are we going to serve today? Are we going to serve the people? Or are we going to serve the agencies that um, promote that we enact this legislation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, every one of us have our own principles and our own morals, Mr. Speaker. But sometimes we also have a change of perspective based on who we serve, Mr. Speaker. And, and Mr. Speaker, even sometimes in this house, sometimes when you're in opposition, you oppose something, but when you're in government, on the other side, Mr. Speaker, you support it. So your perception sometimes changes. As Mr. Speaker, it's no secret I spent many years of my life working in a financial institution, and I was gung-ho at the time, Mr. Speaker, that this is a bill that should be enacted to enable the banks to be able to address, um, you know, um, addressing the delinquency um, and, 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 and getting hold of their assets in a, in a, in a, a more seamless and a, a quicker pace, Mr. Speaker. But based on the current situation in St. Lucia, it is not that easy. Now that, Mr. Speaker, my perspective has changed because now I look at how things affect people 
And I believe that this enactment of this bill, Mr. Speaker, changes, first. changes the dynamics. Well, that's what should be happening. That's what should be happening. Yes, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I remember, I remember some people indicating that the reason the Kenny Anthony's administration did not pass the bill at the time because they felt it was suicidal for the, 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 the results at the polls. I remember, I remember in our administration, I remember various agencies coming to us and indicating if you pass this bill, you will significantly improve your rankings as it relates to ease of doing business. And I remember the cabinet co colleagues at the time saying, but it's not about ease of doing business. How will this thing affect the people? In fact, Mr. Speaker, I was very pleased in a conversation at our last parliament when I heard the prime minister indicate to me that one of the areas, and, and the AG mentioned it, is with regards to protecting um, the family home. Because that was one of the things the previous prime minister leader of the opposition insisted that he wanted placed in that um, bill to ensure that um, the people were protected, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I want, to, I want to just go through some of the clauses in the bill as it relates to certain things that I'm concerned about, Mr. Speaker. Um, first of all, um, Mr. Ag, I, I, I very quickly I want to bring to your attention I guess, but it, I guess it can be a change that we can make um, in, in committee stage because you cite the Insolvency Act as 2023, yeah? so that I guess that would have to change to 2024. Okay, because um, um, page 38, um, short title on commencement. It says the act may be cited as the Insolvency Act 2023. So that I guess it. Committee change, we can, committee stage, we can address that, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, as I spoke earlier, and I spoke about the, the uniqueness of our act, Mr. Speaker, and um, page 58, where it speaks to conflict of laws, section four, it says that wherever there's any conflict between this act and the civil code of St. Lucia and any other enactment, this act prevails, Mr. Speaker. So here goes the Code de Napoleon as it relates to um, trying to, to address this, with Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm also noting that um, the, the under supervised, under section six, the appointment of a supervisor of bankruptcy and insolvency shall be, a, the public service appoint, commission shall appoint a supervisor of bankruptcy and insolvency within the ministry responsible for finance. Um, it may be there, but maybe I, I missed it, but I did not get whether it was um, um, in terms of the contractual arrangements with regards to tenor of, of, of this individual. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't get that. Um, Mr. Speaker, under the powers of the supervisor, very, very sweeping powers, of, that's a very, very um, powerful position, Mr. Speaker. I direct your attention to page 60, clause 8, um, under section C2. The supervisor may direct a financial institution that holds a deposit account of a trustee. A trustee at the time is the person who's, um, who's approached for some assistance, Mr. Speaker. Or another person, Mr. Speaker, I think that is very, very, very sweeping to give um, for, the, for, the, for the supervisor to be able to direct a financial institution to freeze the account of another person. That, that, Mrs. That's, very, that, that's scary to me, Mr. Speaker. I also note, Mr. Speaker, in section three of that same um, clause, to enter and search the premises of the trustee or another person. So I'm, I'm extremely concerned about it, Mr. Speaker. What is, the, what is the definition of premises? Premises. And who is the other person? 
Who is the other person? Could it be my sister? Could Remember, my... the other person is described on page 48. Okay, Mr. Speaker. Um, no, I'm just directing, I'm not okay, making any okay, comment okay, on but it. I, I, as I said, Mr. Speaker, I may have, I may have missed it. That's okay, but I think it's very, very, very sweeping, Mr. Speaker. Um, also, Mr. Speaker, in terms of applications under page 64, um, clause 19, section E, it speaks to a person making an application for a license to act as a trustee under subsection 1 shall have the prescribed qualifications. Um, I, 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 uh, some elaboration as to what are the prescribed qualifications, Mr. Speaker. Have adequate office facilities, staff and systems in place, subject to subsection 4, having a valid insurance or policy, and F, not being subject of a, well, before I go to F, Mr. Speaker, but this really speaks to um, the big established, um, maybe legal companies, Mr. Speaker, and, and, and it really, to me, restricts who can, can act as a trustee. But under F, Mr. Speaker, it speaks to not being the subject of a conviction, decision, de decision, sentence or judgment, including a civil or criminal court decision, Mr. Speaker. So um, if an individual, for example, have a, maybe a traffic violation, Mr. Speaker, um, that person cannot qualify. I, I, I just thought that that was so broad, Mr. Speaker, that you know, it's something that you know, um, you know, we, we, we should, we should pay, take, pay attention to, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, at the end of the day, what, what this current bill is trying to do is to formalize some things that are already happening in the system. For example, an individual who's having difficulty in pain can go to the bank and make certain arrangements. You can formalize that aspect of it, Mr. Speaker. But what this bill is also doing, Mr. Speaker, it is going to make it a lot easier for a financial institution to take hold of your property. And that is the main concern that I have, Mr. Speaker. I know there's a protection. There's a protection for your first home. We, we agree on that. That is there. But I do believe, Mr. Speaker, we have to be very, very careful as to how this is going to affect the normal person, Mr. Speaker. I, um, and so, Mr. Speaker, um, while the majority obviously will vote for Mr. Speaker, I do believe there's a lot more conversation should be done in, 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 the, in, in the public space, Mr. Speaker, with regards to this. Um, because um, as, as to how this thing can affect you know, um, the consumer in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, it concerns me. Now, I recognize, Mr. Speaker, that um, the, the Prime Minister may be under you know, some pressure with regards to getting this thing uniform across you know, the, the, the other countries, and maybe we are the only one who have not yet passed it, and, and he's some under some pressure. Um, but at the end of the day, we must always look to what is beneficial to our people, Mr. Speaker, and, and, and I believe serious consideration must be given to that. I, I rest at this point, Mr. Speaker, but I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot more um, with regards to this particular bill. Thank you.